Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to my little GSX-R 750K1 vlog. So, I've had this bike for about four weeks, is it? Something like that, four weeks maybe. And this is the first time I've taken it out. It's the first time I've ever rode one of these. So, I'm, I, I'm, I'd like to say I'm just getting used to it, but with any GSX-R, you don't really have to get used to them. They do ride similar. It does feel like the S-Rad, but a little, a lot more comfier than the S-Rad. Um, but it's got that S-Rad feel to it, but basically the K1, in my opinion, is an S-Rad with different bodywork on it and probably a few mechanical upgrades, which I don't know what they are. I've not looked into that. Uh, I'm not going to discuss mechanical upgrades because... Who cares? We ride it, that's what we do. Right, so yeah, this is fun. I'll tell you one thing about this. Uh, it's very stable. It's very stable and planted on the road. The power delivery is smooth and it's just enough. It does have a lot more torque than the uh, S-Rad does. A hell of a lot more torque than the S-Rad. It does feel heavier than the S-Rad and it does feel a little bit heavier just to push around than most of the bikes we own but that weight is actually confidence inspiring because you can feel it drop and pin into the corners it feels like it gives you that grip i find i find that bikes that are too light tend to uh, wander away from you a little bit that's what i find anyway i find that they're a little bit floaty on the public roads but this is like a, a nice smooth tank but you have to experience the cornering on Suzuki's that's what they're all about to me the cornering and when they do get going they just fly they're not too intrusive on the throttle it's smooth and I think the 750 is the perfect balance on the road these days perfect balance 600 is a little bit too small and revy but the 750 really does really does give you a lot more opportunities you can get them well you can get them uh, screaming down the road but you can also cruise gently on them power when they get going. Such power. Only intended to go out for like a few minutes down the road but... <laughs>
so it's a very gentle bike this is but when you want to when you want to wind on on it it's so stable very stable I don't know if these are dampers actually this rad did under the nose there but it's just very stable and gentle I mean it's not it's not the greatest looking bike but they, they are nice it's not the greatest looking bike compared to the R1 and and, I've, and to me the S Rad's a better looking bike because of its classic classic look, you know. But it just rides so beautiful. It's gentle and comfy. The seat is so bloody comfy. But these bikes, um, they're a little bit underrated, I suppose, because the S Rad's. Has, has just risen in value incredibly over the last, I'd say, last few months or, well, the last year. The s rads just shot up in value and everybody wants the 750 s rads And this one's kind of left alone. It's kind of left alone and people have forgotten about these. They will go up in value, of course. But it's just a very nice bike to ride and if you want to jump on a bike and just have a relaxing blast, this is the bike. Now I've got this one to sell actually. So we've got it in a little bit of a rough condition. We've done some painting on it, fully serviced it. Uh, someone's actually coming for the bike today. So I'm taking it out for its first and final blast. I don't know what the gear ratio is on it. I feel that it could do with perhaps going down a tooth on the back. Certainly not up a tooth on the front. It's just a little bit too revvy. so strange you can stick this into the top gear and just leave it there and cruise around gently like that it's a nice bike it's a very nice bike I don't feel like I can get any fatigue from it from long travel I mean I'll tell you one thing I've not ridden a JSXR 1000 yet, but uh, I've been told that they're so fast it makes you throw up. And these 750s, the JSXR 750s, really do motor when they get going. They're very quick. So I would hate to think what the 1000s like. The suspension is fantastic. Very comfy and soft. It's just perfect for the roads. The best thing about this is that the comfiness of the seat on my bum. Why aren't motorbike seats like this? Why are superbike seats like little bits of cardboard? The seat is so, it's incredibly comfy. Sorry, but yeah. Most of the bikes you get now, they're quite, the seats are just so uncomfy on them. I don't know if I'm getting old or what, but let me get this corner. It's so smooth. I've got to be steady as people around. Beautiful. Corner's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, uh, I always had Ducatis all my life and Ducatis are incredible bikes, you, you know, to look at and to ride and to listen to. They're incredible bikes, but they're too track focused for me. The super bikes are, they're far too track focused. And when I first jumped on the S-Rod, I've never felt a bike corner like the Suzuki does. I've never ever felt it. And it feels like I've never, I've not ridden a bike for a long time. I've been missing something. Oh, it's just, it's just got this awesome corner feel to it. It really does, it goes through you. You can just throw it over. 
so far Suzuki's are the greatest cornering bike I've ever ridden they really are will it beat the R1 I don't know it just gives you a feeling I can't describe it it's, it's, kind of, it's like the rear shock I don't know what it is but you lay it over and it just glides into corners softly it, it turns so well it really does turn so well and you can push it a little bit more really happy it's not like I say it's not my favorite looking bike this it really isn't but to to ride it but to ride the bike itself and experience how it makes you feel it, it just relaxes you and puts a smile on your face it's not all about the looks you, you feel like you're on something better than when you get off it but then again you know I keep, I'm talking like the bike's ugly but it's not ugly it's a beautiful looking bike in the garage it really stands out I just, I, I, I'm just not too keen on, on the uh, nose, the eagle looking nose on it. It's got like a, like a diamond or an eagle's beak or something. Oh, missed that car, that chicane then, didn't I? I could have flicked it over, I was talking. But yes, yes, the bike is beautiful. It glides, it glides everywhere. And here it is in the flesh. This is probably one of the most impressive bikes I have I've rode this year. In fact, well, it's, it's probably one of very few that I have rode this year. Um, with all this bike for a short period of time, it was literally a quick a makeover, a service, and get it tuned correctly, fully roadworthy, and sell it for a profit. But now, after riding it after about six weeks of ownership, I feel a little bit sad that I've got to let it go. It's uh, it's quite a comfortable bike to get on with. I do have this sense that I've been wrong and I've missed out on opportunity, but would I get another one of these again? I probably would, and I think I will in the future. Definitely this, the 750. I don't think I'd go to a 600, but um, the only thing I would probably change on this is the the rear sprocket. But apart from that, it's, it's smooth. The, the, the torque is brilliant. It's, it's not immense. But it's just where you'd want it, just to pull out those corners. You can lay that throttle down and the bike will carry out the bends. And because the torque's not too fierce, you didn't have to adjust yourself. It's just timed things perfect and you can get a good launch on this bike out of those corners. The weight on it, um, the weight, it's, it, it, like I said, it's probably a heavier bike compared to most uh, of its era and probably to now. But... The weight suits it, the weight suits the suspension, you can feel how solid it feels and planted. As soon as you hit those brakes and you ease off and you sink into that corner, the bike doesn't buck or bounce, it just, it just plants and hugs the corners tight. So lots of people have said in the past that Suzuki's are known and renowned for their handling and I really do get it and if you've not, if you've not ridden one of these before or a Suzuki, I suggest you, you definitely do try it. It's a, it's a different ride experience compared to many bikes. It really does feel like one of those non-bullshit bikes that you can just ride and ride and ride forever and not have a care in the world or have to worry about anything. There's no paranoia strikes you what could go wrong with these. They're ultimately reliable, they're bomb proof, they're like a tank on the road. And they are starting to attract attention now, the K1s. The s rods are suddenly just taken off to the sky when it comes to investment value. But these ones will start to move in the next couple of years and you can get one quite cheap now well under three grand. May, it may not be tipped up condition or great condition as this one, but they are going up in value and they will go up in value. You're looking at around about three grand for one, round about now, to, or to two and a half grand. But in a few years time, I reckon these will be heading to the 4,000 pound mark. It seems to me that the newer JSXRs are kind of dipping down in value a little bit because people are wanting to go back to nostalgia just like me. You know, there are some bikes out there and in a few years time, some people will say, I should have got one of those when I had the chance. This bike is one of them. 